we are talking of classifying ragas and we are now ready to talk about the mela or the mela karta system of classifying ragas now this is a major theoretical advance that uh, started sometime in the mid 16th century and uh, was pursued with great zest in the lakshana grantha tradition for two or three centuries and uh, it has uh, made a deep impact on carnatic music this is perhaps one case of theory impacting practice now what is mela or what what is mela it's that the idea is actually quite simple we are here talking of grouping ragas of classifying ragas now let us take this group of ragas we have arabhi hamsal dhwani nalina kanti milahari kedaram the aroha avroha of these ragas are you can see it in the slide as you can see they use swaras that belong to the major scale or the shank dheera shankara bhanam scale they don't use all those all the swaras but they use some of the swaras that occur in the shankara bhanam scale so arabhi uses re2 g2 mavan dhavan ni2 do of course ar the aroha of arabhi does not have ga and ni but still in just if you if you must say what are the notes that occur in arabhi the notes that occur in arabhi are the notes of the major scale again the notes of hamsa dhwani hamsa dhwani is an out of raga it has only five swaras and it doesn't use ma and dha but the ri ga sa ri ga pa ni ri ga and ni are the swaras from the major scale shankara bhanam scale so also with nalina kanti nalina kanti has a has a vakra uh, form it has a there is a, a certain a zigzag pattern in the aroha bro itself sagari ma kali sa sari pa ma gari sa ni ta ni sagari ma sagari ma kali sa sari pa ma gari pa ma gari sa these are also notes from the shankara bhanam scale sari ga pa ni sari pa ga ri sa again notes from the shankara bhanam scale arabi sari ma pa da sa sari ra pa ma ga ri sa nilhari sari ga pa da sa sari ra pa ma ga ri sa kedaram ஹரி <laughs> both ma and dha kedar and doesn't have a dha but in terms of the swaras that these ragas take they can be seen as subsets so to say of the shankara bhanam scale so the shankara bhanam scale has sarigama padhani and arabhi takes a few swaras from this 
Hamsa Dwani takes another set of swaras from this. Nalina Kanti takes yet another set of swaras from the same scale, Shankarabhana scale. So also with Bilahari and Kedaram. So this is the idea of Mela, that all these ragas can be grouped under the Shankarabharana Mela. That is, this is one scale, the scale of Shankarabharana and uh, all these ragas can be grouped under it because the swaras that occur in these ragas are the swaras of that scale. So that is a, a very simple idea of Mela. So if you have a raga like um, like um, um, say for instance um, Lalita or something. Now these notes are not the notes of Shankarabharana. So Lalita will not be classified under Shankarabharana. It will be classified under some other raga Maya Madhava Goda. So the idea of the Mela was simple that it is a scale and under this Mela or in this under this Mela all ragas that take those swaras they are grouped under that Mela. This method of classifying was first attempted by uh, Rama Matya in his uh, Swaramela Kalanithi, it was written in the mid 16th century. Rama Matya was uh, attached to the Vijayanagara court um, and in this he advances the theory of Mela as a method of classifying rangas. And he has listed 20 such melas and the names of those melas are here for your interest. Many of these um, ragas, certainly the names we have many ragas by this, these the same names even today, Mukhari, Hindola, Riti Gaulai, Sri Ragam and so on. But most likely, very likely the ragas have changed over the centuries. But um, for Ramamatya and for many others, the Mela is a group of Swarasthanas and ragas are grouped under it which use those same swarasthanas and these ragas are called janya ragas. Janya means born of. So the, it, it is almost as if these ragas are born of the mela. But that is only a, a terminology. It is not as if the ragas were actually born out of this mela. The ragas were already there. The ragas are already there and the mela is only a uh, a construct, uh, a scale which is uh, which is suggested, which, which we suggest can uh, can be used to classify ragas. Now this idea of Mela caught on and uh, after him every musicologist, every writer of any Lakshana Grantha um, worked some ideas of his own about this Mela and um, one of the most critical figure, critical figure in this endeavor, in this uh, uh, group of Lakshana Grantha, Granthakaras was Venkatamakhin. Venkatamakhin in his uh, very very well known Chaturdandi Prakashika that is the treatise that he wrote. He comes up with a system for generating scales. How many scales can possibly generate it? That is the question. You see, as when Rama Matya set out on the 
path of Mela of him and he suggested that Mela is a way of classifying ragas. He was concerned with the ragas that were actually prevalent and then he created, he suggested only those scales that were needed to account for the ragas that were actually prevalent. But soon the issue of how many melas can be generated, that assumed a life of its own and musicologists started um, trying to figure out ways of uh, figuring out how many such melas are possible without any reference to actual practice of music that interested musicologists immensely. And Venkata Makin's um, suggestions, Venkata Makin um, said that 72 such scales are possible and that is what rules Carnatic music even today. Venkata Makin worked um, in the 17th century, Chaturthandi Prakashika was written in the 17th century and uh, even today Carnatic music we speak of 72 Melakarthas. Now how are 72 scales possible, 72 Sampurna scales possible? 